Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, apologies firstly that this video is going to be quite rambly. I haven't structured what I'm going to say like I usually do and so as a result a lot of this is quite off the cuff um, and as you can see I'm you know struggling already to like formulate my thoughts but that's okay. So I wanted to talk about what specialties I'm interested in at this current point in time being at the end of my well close to the end of my medical school career um, with only a couple of months left and just a couple more OSCEs uh, left between me and becoming a doctor. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because my mind has changed drastically over the past week in terms of what specialties I'm considering and so I thought it would be interesting to kind of document my thoughts at this current point in time and then reflect on this in a year's time and see how my mind has changed after a year of working as a doctor. To start off, just for context, uh, I don't know if you've watched any of my other previous videos, but I wanted to do medicine, I don't know, maybe from like year 10, but probably even earlier than that. And I think at the time, uh, the thing that I was particularly interested in was cardiology and cardiothoracic surgery just because I found the heart to be a fascinating organ. We learnt about it once in year 10, um, and then I did work experience with a cardiologist, and I just thought it was super cool. That was kind of what I wanted to do pre-med school. And then there was also actually this other kind of train of thought that I had uh, about wanting to be a surgeon, because the thing that I liked about surgery was that with your physical hands and like the skills that you have crafted over the years of you know working as a surgeon you would have um, the ability to you know literally change someone's life with your hands and it's kind of different to being a physician where you know as a physician you're giving medications most of the time you're using your brain the decisions that you make I guess could be replicated by other people whereas in surgery you know the cuts that you make will not necessarily ever be the same as somebody else. And so I thought that was very cool, that you literally could do something with your hands that no one else could do, and you could change someone's life for the better or for the worse. So fast forward, when I got into med school, the early years of med school, first and second year, I still wanted to be a surgeon. I was actually gunning quite hard, and uh, that drive persisted with me. And then third year came, and it was 2020 and COVID was around. And then I kind of, I don't know. I don't know what exactly it was. It was a combination of things, I'm sure, like COVID, like the fact that I didn't do as well in my second year exams. And so I, I guess uh, it kind of uh, destroyed a part of my identity thinking that I was, you know, doing very well in medicine and realizing that uh, the objective exams uh, said that I, wasn't doing as well as I thought. I definitely wasn't like, you know, failing by any means, but I just wasn't at the top of my game as I hoped I would be. Yeah, so that, and then like, uh, when I started placement in third year, which was more so at the end of the year after COVID had settled down a bit, um, and we were allowed to go into hospitals, I started on a couple of surgery rotations, orthopedic surgery, and then general surgery. And I didn't have a great experience on orthopedic surgery um, for those two weeks. and that kind of just put me off surgery and it's kind of weird to say right because prior to that there was like five years where I really wanted to do surgery and then two weeks and it was all gone like that just because of the one negative experience I had and that's one of the things about med school and, and placements is that a single negative experience can really influence the way that your career path goes and so yeah, after those combination of factors, I, I thought I didn't want to do surgery again. And in fact, I was even questioning whether I wanted to do medicine full time. Um, and that's around the same time when I started this YouTube channel. And I was just exploring ways to diversify my identity and do things outside of medicine because I realized that for the past, you know, five, six years um, in the lead up of getting into med medical school and then when I actually got into med school, my whole life was really focused on medicine. Um, and so, yeah, then I explored other things and third and fourth year and most of fifth year rolled around and, you know, I was, I was present and I enjoyed parts of placement, 
but I also wouldn't say that I loved it as much as I thought I would when I was a pre-med student. You know, up until very recently I was thinking medicine would just be a part-time career for me and I would explore other things on the side, like YouTube, like other, I don't know, entrepreneurial things, etc. Um, and then something happened over the past, you know, five or six weeks and that was that I started on my emergency medicine, well, actually there was a combination of things. One, I started on my emergency medicine rotations. Uh, two, I started doing AIM shifts. So AIM is this new program that the government implemented since um, COVID came around to kind of ease a bit of the workforce burden on the junior doctors uh, by making senior medical students or fifth year medical students uh, providing them with like paid jobs to essentially perform the role of a junior doctor uh, with reduced scope of practice of course and so that program was there in the first half of the year but I forgot to apply and then in the second half of the year I applied and I got on it so I was starting to do some aim shifts as well over the past few weeks and it was these combination of ED and aim shifts that really that I really enjoyed because of a couple of reasons one I felt like on ED you really do get to practice like doing actual medicine, the stuff that you learn in medical school. An undifferentiated patient that you get to work up, you get to take the history, the examination, you get to hand that over to a doctor and then discuss like investigations and management and you really feel like, you know, the stuff that you learn in medical school is being applied to what you're practically doing on a day-to-day -day basis and that's something that you don't really get in other aspects of medicine, at least as a medical student when you're on placement. And that was hands down just the best experience I had on placement. It was so much fun. And then alongside that were these aim shifts where because you're starting to get paid now, um, the doctors kind of have higher expectations of you and put more responsibility on you. And instead of just being like a student who's here to, to watch and learn, you're being paid to be there so you they're going to give you your fair share of work and that really just made placement so much more enjoyable because you felt like you were actually contributing you felt like you were helping uh, make a difference to patients and you actually kind of felt like you were being a doctor and so that really just like changed how I was viewing medicine as you know my future career because as I mentioned in the past it was or well, up until very recently it was only part-time because I wasn't enjoying it that much but now I could see how I could want to do this full-time because I was looking forward to the aim shifts I was looking forward to being an ED I was looking forward to making a difference and, and feel like I was learning and contributing so up until last week when I'd done you know a few weeks of ED and I'd done uh, a number of aim shifts I kind of was at the stage where I had narrowed down the list of specialties that I thought that I wanted to do down into just a couple. So I was thinking the things that I was most interested in would be ED, GP or psychiatry. The reason being those were all good lifestyle specialties, relatively speaking, and like they had flexibility for you to be able to work part-time but also work full-time. They had some variety um, and yeah so th those were like the specialties that I was interested in. And so the other day I was having a conversation with one of the RMOs or resident medical officers. So that's basically a doctor who's two years um, after finishing med school. And he was talking to me about how he wanted to do BPT or basics, basic physicians training. And I mentioned that, you know, that was something that I was interested in in the past, but I saw how difficult the training was and how much the med regs seemed to hate their life and how much um, study you had to do and how hard the exams were. And I kind of decided that, oh, I can't really be bothered to do all that if I'm just going to be working part time in this career. Like, what's the point of all that sacrifice and that pain um, if... I'm just going to be working part-time and so that's also another reason why I was interested in ED psych and um, GP because they're not particularly competitive training programs to get onto uh, relative to other training programs and there's great flexibility in being able to actually do training part-time so a lot of other training programs you might be able to do it part-time but 
I feel like it's almost frowned upon to do so, even though it shouldn't be. Um, but these other ones, EDGP and Psych, there is huge flexibility. Uh, but now that I realise that I, I think I want to do medicine full time, and again, this might change in the future. Who knows? Maybe a year after working full time as a junior doctor, I'll decide that yeah, I can't be bothered to do all this. Um, but right now, like as I'm looking forward to my career in medicine. I have decided that those years of sacrifice during training are worth it if ultimately I'm in a uh, specialty that I'm going to enjoy more and that's going to be more fulfilling and rewarding. Now with this like newfound love of medicine and also I had this uh, epiphany, I don't, I've been having lots of epiphanies lately about how um, I think it's because as a result of being at placement, I feel like I'm feeling like I'm contributing. I've felt that that calling, I guess, of medicine that like you are genuinely helping people and and helping in a tangible way on a day to day basis. And you don't really get that privilege in many other careers. And throughout med school, I'd lost that appreciation of of what a doctor does because I was simply observing and in a way, I guess I felt very detached from that. Now that I'm actually getting to experience it and I'm an active participant in these conversations or the management of patients or uh, conversations with patients, I feel like that that love and that, that calling that is medicine has kind of sucked me back in. I actually look forward to going to placement now, which is very strange to say because in the past, I, I didn't like every minute that I every minute that I could leave placement early was you know the ideal scenario because then I could get home and work on YouTube do other kinds of hobbies um, and you know just spend time away from medicine but now I'm yeah looking forward to going staying for longer hours um, even like taking on extra jobs to try and learn more and become a better junior doctor. So what does all this mean? Well, I'm glad that you asked. So basically what it means is that all the, that process of elimination that I had done before, I ruled out surgery, I ruled out most of medicine, I ruled out, you know, dermatology and ophthalmology because they're too difficult to get onto. Now I've kind of reintegrated them back into the specialties that I am considering. And I basically just opened this website, which has got a list of all the different specialties that you could pursue in Australia as a doctor. And I'm going through each of them and crossing off the ones that I don't want to do. So things like obstetrics and gynecology or sexual health medicine or pathology. These are specialties that I, I don't really want to do, even if I haven't actually had exposure to them. I don't see myself working, you know, in a lab or working solely with women and delivering babies and that kind of thing. So yeah, I've, got, I've gone through this list and I've crossed off lots of the ones that I don't want to do, but now I have like so many different specialties that I am considering that I've reintegrated into my specialty list, including some surgical subspecialties, which I thought I'd never say even a few weeks ago. I'm looking forward to enjoying this wave of enthusiasm about medicine again. And I hope it isn't just a wave, I hope it is more of a permanent thing. Um, and I hope that I do find a specialty that I'm able to do full time because it is such a privilege to do medicine. Uh, as much as I'd forgotten about that over the past few years, it is a privilege and I think if I had to give you know any advice from this video, which isn't the purpose of this video, but for anyone who is in med school and who is thinking or feeling like you're not cut out to be a doctor or you don't enjoy you know what placement is like as a student, then I would encourage you to at least try and give being a junior doctor a shot. You can call it quits after that, but I think as a student, your experience is so different to what working as a doctor is actually like. And you're going to kick yourself if you call it quits too early and you leave something on the table that you actually might have enjoyed, uh, but that you never gave it the chance. So in summary, the specialties that I was interested in 
around a week prior to today were GP, ED and psychiatry and now as of today there's this whole list that I'll leave up here of the different specialties that I'm interested in and I'm gonna spend the next you know few years narrowing them down as I do rotations as a doctor as I try and pursue research in different fields to to get a feel of whether you know I see myself doing research in those fields since they are that like research is going to be an integral part of um, getting onto a training program initially and then continuing personal or professional development as a doctor and if I can't stomach doing research in that particular field then I probably shouldn't be working as a doctor in that field so Again, apologies that this was kind of a rambly video. It didn't really do anything for you, I'm sure, but it was very self-indulgent and helped me, you know, just articulate some of the things that I've been thinking. So thank you very much if you spent the time to watch this video. If not, uh, well, you probably wouldn't be reading or listening to this, I should say. Uh, anyway, I'll catch you in the next one.